Welcome to our lecture online. The next problem on the JE advanced test from 2021 section 2 or paper 2, well it was kind of a challenge and the challenge is because of the drawing and the way the wording was placed on the paper you weren't quite sure, at least I wasn't quite sure where to go initially. It does, it does deal with EMF and internal resistance and it says in order to measure the internal resistance of R1 of a cell of EMF E, a meter bridge of wire resistance R equals 50 ohms is used, a resistance of R divided by 2, another cell of EMF E over 2 with internal resistance R, and a galvanometer all are used in a circuit, as shown in the figure. If the null point is found at L equals 72 centimeters, then the value of R1 equals. So essentially what we're trying to do here is figure out the internal resistance of this particular EMF. Hmm. And I looked at the drawing and I go, well, what's going on here? Then I realized that this thing at the bottom here is what is the what they call the meter bridge. And essentially they said that this was a meter long. And this section right here, and I think that was marked on the drawing, is section L. And they told us that L was equal to 72 centimeters. And this whole thing has a resistance of 50 ohms. That means that this here, this section here, is 28 centimeters, which means that the resistance of this is 36 ohms, and the resistance of this is 14 ohms. And looking at it that way makes it a lot easier. So think of this as a resistor of 36 ohms, and this as a resistor of 14 ohms. Then the next thing to realize is that we're going to have a current flow in the first loop like this, and let's call that I1, and we're going to have a current flow in the second loop like this, let's call that I2, and we'll do it in a clockwise direction. Notice though that in this case I1 will go this way through this part of the circuit and I2 will go in the opposite direction, and when they talk about the null point, what they're saying is that the galvanometer will show zero current, at that point I1 will be equal to I2, and that was the real key of understanding what the problem is asking for. When you see the opposing currents, when they're equal to each other, there'll be no current going through this part of the circuit, and the galvanometer here will show zero current. So at that point, the null point means that I1 equals I2, and that's a very important aspect of it. So now we're going to use Kirchhoff's rules to come up with the equations in both of the loops. So to do that, we'll do loop one first. Loop one, starting with the EMF, we go from high to low, that would be minus E. And then we have a, a voltage drop across the resistor, so that's minus uh, R1I, R1I1. And then we go from here to here, uh, across this one, that's plus A over 2. But there's no current coming through here, there's no voltage drop across the resistance, and that would go from here to here. Again, we have I1 times the resistance of 36 ohms, so that's a voltage, that's a voltage drop of minus 36 times I1, and we come around, that equals zero. We should do the same on the right side, and let me use the space over here. So on the right side, so that's loop two. Uh, we go, let's see here, we go from here to here across E2 in the negative, so that from positive to negative, so that's minus E over 2. Then we come across here, across this resistor, now this here is the 50 ohms divided by 2, so this is 25 ohms, so we might as well write 25 ohms. So we have a minus 25 times I2, and then we have a, a voltage drop here, that would be a minus 14 times I2, which is equal to zero. So simplifying that, we get minus E, e over 2 is equal to my, oh, go like, minus 39 I2 is equal to zero. So from this, uh, we can bring that the other side. So we have, when this goes to the other side, we have, um, a positive E2, so let me do that, let me come up here. So we have minus 39I, now I'm going to write I1, because I1 is equal to I2, so I can replace this by R1, so minus 39I1 is equal to uh, minus, that becomes a plus E over 2, and so therefore I1 equals a minus E 
over 78. So there's a relationship between I1 and E from the right loop, from the loop 2. And now we come back over here and we finish this off. So we have minus E plus E over 2. That gives me a minus E over 2. Um, then here we have a minus R1 I1 is equal, oop, nope, not yet. I have a minus 36 I1 equals 0. So now we have to come here and we have to make that replacement. Hmm, hmm. I'm not sure which way I want to replace it. Do I want to replace the I's or the E's? I think I'm going to go for the E. So um, I can say that E or minus E is equal to 78 I1. Let me try to make that replacement. I'm going to come up here and so I can write minus E is 78 I1. So I have 78 I1 divided by 2 minus R1 I1 is equal to 36 I1, 0, Oop, minus. And then this becomes 39, so I have 39 I1 minus R1 I1, I keep writing an equal there, minus 36 I1 is equal to 0, subtracting I get 3 I1 minus R1 I1 equals 0. Now you can see that I1s can simply be cancelled out. And so now I have R1 equals 3. And of course that's in terms of ohms. And that means our answer up here we're looking for is that the internal resistance for cell 1 is equal to 3 ohms. So again, the way we did that was to realize that this was a resistor bar of 50 ohms and it was divided into two lengths a length of 72 centimeters and 28 centimeters, so we divide the resistance appropriately according to the length. Realizing that this is 25 ohms and that there's no current through the central branch here because we said the null point, that means that there's no uh, current going through the galvanometer. We only have a voltage drop due to the cell right there. And then we set up two loops, loop one and loop two. We do add up all the voltages going around both loops. We realize that the currents are the same, which means that this can be replaced by I1. Now we have a relationship between E and I1. We then use the substitution right here to get rid of the E on the first loop equation. We only have I1s in there, and then we realize that I1s cancels out, and 3 equals R1. So with a little bit of working on to, uh, two of Kirchhoff's loop equations like that, solving them simultaneously, you can solve for the internal resistance. And that is how it's done. So you think I did it a step too quick. <laughs> okay, so what we could do here, we could simply go I1 times 3 minus R1 equals 0. And then, of course, we can write that's a product, so I1 equals 0 and 3 minus R1 equals 0, or 3 equals R1, like that. So, yeah. But remember, we're pressed for time, so whenever we can take a shortcut, <laughs> although shortcuts are dangerous, you can make mistakes in shortcuts. You got to be very careful. Like Mickey Mouse algebra. No, that's not Mickey Mouse algebra, but it's, um, it's a quick, quick shortcut.